What's going on guys? This is Vinalik Buma, back with another Borderlands 1 Remastered video, and today I figured I'd go over what I think is the best build or builds for Roland the Soldier. Now, Roland is essentially Borderlands 1 Soldier class, and in the tradition of Axton from Borderlands 2 and Wilhelm from the pre-sequel, he's primarily geared as more of a support character. This is perhaps more the case in Borderlands 1, as Roland has a number of skills and class mods that are designed to benefit an entire party rather than just Roland himself. However, and with that said, that doesn't mean that Roland can't be played viably solo. After all, Roland specializes with combat rifles, shotguns, and launchers, and he has a number of very useful skills that are perfect for boosting your DPS, regenerating your ammo, and even healing yourself. You've also got the turret, which can be very useful for distraction and debuffing enemies, much like Accident's turret from Borderlands 2, or Wilhelm's combat drones from the pre-sequel. Now, as far as this video is concerned, my goal here is to put together a skill tree that should viably allow you to achieve the most flexibility for your weapon and gear setups, as I'm focusing around optimizing our skill tree to make use of what I would consider to be Roland's better class mods. That way, you can use a wider variety of gear setups while using the same spec, and you also don't have to worry about farming very specific guns or gear for your character. Also, I'm going to assume you haven't completed the Underdome and Claptrap DLCs to get those four additional DLC skill points, but if you have those four additional DLC skill points, I will include some skill point outlines for those situations. Otherwise though, and without further ado, let's go over Roland's skill tree and I'll explain what skills are good and what skills you can or should avoid. Now, unlike a lot of the later Borderlands games like 2 and the pre-sequel, each skill tree for each of the Borderlands 1 characters has only two different choices for any given skill tier. With this in mind, it's usually a matter between picking the best of the two skills, and starting with tier 1 in the infantry tree, we have our choice between impact and sentry. Impact is a pretty nice skill as it improves the damage of most weapons at a rate of 3% per point, and it can be boosted by a number of class mods. Sentry on the other hand just boosts turret damage, and while the turret can be effective early on, it becomes noticeably less effective later on in the game where enemies have more health, shielding, or a combination of the two. With this in mind, it's probably best that for both solo and co-op play that you spec for impact as it's boosted by comms and because it's a gun damage boost. So for tier 1, our winner is going to be the impact skill. Moving on to infantry tier 2, this one is more of a toss-up. Scattershot on the one hand is a phenomenal skill for shotguns as it both improves the damage of and reduces the projectile spread of your shotguns, effectively making shotguns more powerful and giving them slightly better range. Metal Storm on the other hand is another great skill as you can greatly increase your fire rate and decrease your recoil, which should greatly improve your overall DPS upon scoring a kill. Ideally, I'd actually recommend you pick up both of these skills if you can, but if you did have to just pick one, I'd recommend you take Metal Storm since it benefits all weapons. But again, if you can get both and you have good shotgun proficiency, you really should get both. For that reason, I am going to say that Tier 2 is a toss-up. This of course brings us to Infantry Tier 3, where I think there is a much more clear choice. Refire is a skill that's similar to Mordecai's Carrying Call in that it boosts action skill cooldown when you shoot an enemy. Though it's not as powerful as Carrying Call, Refire can prove to be quite useful in reducing the enormous cooldown time on the turret, which is something like 100 seconds before any skill or class mod boosts. Assault, on the other hand, is a skill that improves the magazine size and reduces recoil with combat rifles. Admittedly, Assault is certainly not a bad skill, and I'd recommend you take it if you're using only combat rifles, but I think you'll find Refar is more useful since it allows you to reduce the cooldown on your turret by firing any weapon. So for Tier 3, I'm going to have to go with the Refire skill, though Assault could be a good choice if you're using combat rifles and a Rifleman comm exclusively. This of course brings us to the capstone of the tree, which is Guided Missile. Now, in my humble opinion, this skill is both great and kinda lousy at the same time. On the one hand, the rockets can temporarily stunlock enemies, breaking whatever potential attack or movement that they might attempt. Guided Missile also allows for the potential to hit enemies that are physically behind your turret too, which in my opinion is a big deal if you consider that the turret can normally only hit enemies that are directly in front of it. 
On the flip side though, and in my experience, these missiles aren't always 100% accurate and can miss. Plus, the missiles aren't guaranteed to stun lock in my experience, and the stun effect isn't as powerful as the day's effect is on other characters. So at most, I'd recommend you just put 1 out of 5 points here, which should allow for at least 3 missiles. Max investment yields 5 missiles per turret activation and allows them to be fired at a faster rate, but given the potential inaccuracy, I'd recommend you just put 1 point here. After all, if the stun lock doesn't occur and the missile hits, you can still deal some damage. That should pretty much cover the infantry tree though, and with that tree out of the way, let's move on to tier 1 of the support skill tree, which contains the defense and stockpile skills. Defense is a skill that will boost the rate at which your shield recharges, while stockpile allows for passive ammo regen, assuming the player or players that the player is playing with are near the Scorpio turret. For that reason, stockpile may actually be a pretty good choice in a co-op setting as it allows other players to get passive ammo regen for whatever guns they're using. That said though, stockpile is proximity based and for me personally, I find it can be difficult to take advantage of the skill's effects for both solo and co-op play. That and another skill in the support tree, which we will discuss shortly, is more effective in regenerating ammo for solo play and possibly even co-op play if you can deal with the time delay with the packets. So with that in mind, for tier 1, defense is going to be the winner, plus it's boosted by the commando or shotgun specialty com, so if you're using shotguns, you might as well pick up the defense skill. As for tier 2, we have both quick charge and barrage. The former is likely a skill you'll recognize if you played Axton in Borderlands 2, and is functionally very similar in that it allows passive shield regeneration upon scoring a kill. While Quick Charge doesn't stack with the defense skill, both can proc at the same time and should allow for pretty fast shield recovery, which is a good thing. As for Barrage, it increases the number of shots for your turrets. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the turret for combat in Borderlands 1, and I use it as more of a method for debuffing and distracting enemies, so I don't think you'll really need this skill. And of course with that point made, that's going to make Quick Charge our winner for support tier 2. Maybe you can get some use out of Barrage, but I just personally prefer Quick Charge. This brings us to support tier 3, which is admittedly another toss up. Grenadier, while a kill skill, can be extremely effective with maximum investment, and this is because Grenadier not only boosts the damage of your grenades, but it also allows you to potentially regenerate grenades, and with maximum 5 out of 5 in the skill, one kill can yield one free grenade. Assuming you keep this kill skill active long enough, you can regenerate additional grenades over time, which makes the buff provided by this kill skill very useful when paired with a transfusion or merv grenade. As for our other skill, which is deploy, this is another very useful skill as it reduces turret cooldown time. With 5 out of 5 invested, you can reduce the turret's cooldown to 60 seconds, and with the aid of class mods, you can get this to as much as 9 out of 5, which yields about a 42 to 43 second cooldown time. Keep in mind that this accounts for if your turret survives the full 20 second duration and is in the absence of skills like refire. So you could potentially get your cooldown times even lower than this if you have refire and if your turret didn't survive its full 20 second duration. Ultimately, both the Grenadier and Deploy skills are highly recommended, though if you did have to choose one, I'd recommend Deploy since there are other methods of regenerating grenades. Still though, I'd highly recommend both of these skills and thus I'm going to have to say this is a toss up. And finally, we have the Support Trees capstone, which is Supply Drop. As you might guess, this is a great skill as it allows your turret to occasionally deploy supply drops to the player, which can restore your grenades and, most importantly, restore some of your ammo. The best part about this skill is that it makes it so Roland doesn't have to have an ammo regeneration class mod during solo play, as deploying your turret can basically allow you to regenerate whatever ammo you might lose. I'd also argue this skill doesn't even need maximum investment, as 1 point yields 3 supply drops, and 3 out of 5 points yields 4 supply drops. This will be the most you'll usually need for most situations. Maybe you could kick it up to a 5 out of 5 if you're in co-op, as those supply drops are going to be split between multiple characters, 
But even then, I would say 3 out of 5 in most cases is plenty. In the end, this is still a great skill, and it's definitely recommended you put at least one point or three to get the most out of it. Now we can move on to our final skill tree, which is the Medic Tree. Though this tree is more co-op focused, I'll still go over each tier, and starting with our first tier, we have Fitness and Aid Station. All Fitness really does is provides a passive boost to your maximum health, and at 5 out of 5, it caps out at a 25% health boost. Aid Station, on the other hand, is a co-op skill that's similar to the Stockpile skill from the Support Tree, in that it's a proximity-based thing that only works if you're near the turret. At 5 out of 5, you're getting 5% of your health regenerated a second, and given that the turret lasts 20 seconds, this would allow you to potentially regenerate 100% of your health. That said, and like I mentioned earlier with Stockpile, I'm not a huge fan of this skill due to how you have to be near the turret to use it. Plus, the regeneration rate is based on Roland's health, and with that in mind, this skill works best the more health Roland has. Alternatively, you could just use a skill that I'm about to go over shortly to basically shoot other players in your party to regenerate their health, and in my opinion, that's a bit of a better method because you have a lot more control over the healing in that instance. Ultimately, I'm warding Medic Tier 1 to Fitness since I prefer it more. However, if you're playing co-op, you could probably make a good argument that Aid Station is useful. Moving on to Medic Tier 2 though, we have Overload and Cauterize. Both of these skills are really good as Overload will effectively boost the magazine size of almost any weapon, while Cauterize is a skill that allows you to potentially shoot your other co-op partners and heal them for a portion of the damage you might normally deal. As you might guess, Cauterize has synergy with pretty much any weapon damage bonus that you might receive, and depending on the weapons you use, you can potentially restore another player's health almost instantly. Unfortunately, it's not useful for solo play, while Overload is definitely useful for both solo and co-op play. So as far as our Tier 2 winner is concerned, I'm going to have to give it to Overload by default. Again, this doesn't mean Cauterize is a bad skill, it's just that Overload is going to be useful in more situations. This brings us to Medic Tier 3, which, like Tier 2, could potentially be another toss-up for co-op players. After all, Revive gives you a percentage chance to revive players with your turret, which is really a must-have skill for co-op play. Then again, this isn't really a skill you can use for solo play, which makes Grit our de facto winner in most use cases. Unlike Borderlands 2, where Grit can basically make you near immortal from time to time, in Borderlands 1, it just provides a flat damage reduction. At 5 out of 5, you're getting about 15% damage reduction, which makes it so you take about roughly 87% of the damage you would normally take, and at 9 out of 5, you get about 27% damage reduction, which makes it so you take about 79% of the damage you normally would. With this in mind, Grit is a nice skill, and while I wish it offered more resistance, the passive resistance is useful, so it gets my recommendation between both skills. And finally, we have our capstone for the Medic Tree, which is Stat. This skill could basically be described as a portable version of Aid Station that works as a kill skill and is activated around the player rather than the player's turret. This in effect makes it a more portable version of the aid station skill, and in that sense, I think it's way more practical. I'd recommend you put 5 out of 5 here for the extra durability it provides for solo play, and your co-op partners might even appreciate the boost too. So, whether you're playing co-op or solo, this skill is definitely recommended. Alright, now that we've gone over Roland's skill tree pretty in depth, it's about time that I show you what I use for my skill tree. Note that I'm showing a character that hasn't unlocked the four additional skill points from the DLCs. As you can see from the skill tree, I've pretty much followed most of the advice that I went over previously. Starting in Infantry, you can see that I picked up Impact, Scattershot, Metal Storm, Refire, and I put one point into Guided Missile. Of these five skills, I'd consider Impact, Metal Storm, and Refire to be the most essential, and I picked up Scattershot for reasons that will become apparent shortly. As for Guided Missile, I just don't think you need to max it out. Feel free to experiment, but honestly, I think you can do without maxing it. As for the Support Tree, again, I've gone for pretty much most of the skills that I recommended, picking up Defense, Quick Charge, Grenadier, Deploy, and then I put 3 points into Supply Drop. 
Like I mentioned previously with Guided Missile, I don't think you need to max Supply Drop here since the Supply Drops provide plenty of ammo already, but again, feel free to experiment. As for the rest of the tree, Defense and Quick Charge are good for recovering your shields, Grenadier is nice for the additional grenade ammo regen, and Deploy is going to reduce your turret cooldown. So, between all of these skills, I think they are all good recommendations. This brings us to the Medic tree. Now again, I went with all of the skills that I recommended as Fitness will boost your max health, Overload is always great as it boosts magazine size, Grit is nice for resistances, and Stat allows for passive health regen upon scoring a kill. In my opinion, going this route makes the most sense for a solo build, since the other skills I avoided are usually best for co-op anyway. Now, like I said earlier, I'm not actually using any of the DLC skill points here that were added with the Underdome and Claptrap DLCs, so assuming you've completed both of those and you have those four extra skill points, I'd say you really have two different options. You either A, pump them all into Assault, or B, pump all of them into Guided Missile. If you put them in Assault, you can have these bonuses boosted when you equip a Rifleman class mod, and if you go the Guided Missile route, you can't really do that. By the same token, if you do get Guided Missile, you do get more rockets, which may or may not be more useful to you. Personally, I've found I've never really needed the four extra skill points, but if you have them, that's where I would put them. The main reason I'd recommend you spec this way though, as opposed to other ways, is because of its compatibility with the majority of Roland's class mods. This spec setup should allow you to fully take advantage of the Champion Com, which boosts Atlas weapons and gear, the Commando Com, which boosts shotguns, the Gunman Com, which boosts SNS gear, the Heavy Gunner Com, which is known for its ability to boost your magazine size on all weapons, and finally, the Shock Trooper Com, which is designed to get the most use out of your shock elemental weapons. You're also getting partial or full skill compatibility with the Rifleman Com, depending on if you have 65 or 69 skill points, and you're even getting decent compatibility with a number of the co op based comms like the Leader Com, Marine Com, Patriot Com, and Tactician Com. So, you could theoretically use those too and receive those percentage based bonuses from those without a respec. Now, assuming you do want to go the co-op route, here's how I would alter my initial skill tree to make all of this work. Keep in mind that again, I'm not accounting for those four additional skill points from the DLCs, so you may actually have more skill point headroom than what I have here. As you can see, there's not much difference when compared to the solo tree, save for the fact that we pulled a few points from Grenadier and put them in Revive, while taking a few points from Grit and putting them into Cauterize. Honestly, I would have preferred keeping Grenadier, but I think this skill is significantly less useful unless you have at least 5 out of 5 in the skill, because 5 out of 5 in the skill is where you reliably receive one grenade for each time the skill is activated. As for our other two co-op centric skills, the main reason I put 5 out of 5 in Revive is because there are no other skills that really boost or benefit that skill, so putting 5 out of 5 in it ensures that you get the full 70% chance. Cauterize can benefit from your overall damage, and if you use it with impact and scattershot on a shotgun, you can heal other players fairly quickly, so you don't necessarily need the full investment there. As for Grit, I would like to obviously have 5 out of 5 in Grit, but 3 out of 5 in Grit is a concession that we made to get some points into Cauterize. Now, assuming you had the additional skill points from the DLCs, I would simply subtract 1 point from Cauterize, put that into Grenadier, and then use your 4 additional DLC skill points and put those into Grenadier. That way you can achieve 5 out of 5 in Grenadier. While you lose out on the Cauterize healing bonus, I think it's worth it for the 5 out of 5 in Grenadier, and the additional grenade that you can regenerate each time the skill procs. If you're worried about it, you can always make sure to equip a Marine or Patriot class mod, as that way you can boost Cauterize's percent based bonuses. Other than that though, I think you'll find this setup plays a lot like the last one. It's just a little less durable with the lower investment in Grit, and you might lose out on Grenadier if you don't have those additional DLC skill points. In the end though, I think you'll find that Roland is a pretty great character all around, and I think you'll find that both of these builds slash skill setups should work out pretty well for you. Both should allow you a bunch of flexibility with what class mods and gear you want to use, 
So again, I think that's pretty awesome. Otherwise, guys, I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. I know this video was super long, and I hope it helped you guys out. And if it did, be sure to smash the like button, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload my next Borderlands video. And as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.